Let me tell you something. No singer intimidates me. I can hang out with the best of them. Gotta have a little bit. Just a little bit. I need a little bit. A respect. Gotta have a little bit. Just a little bit. Hi, I am a diva and I'm a house music singer. A lot of people confuse house with dance music, but house music originated in Chicago and um, I'm one of the top house music singers. I am the queen of house. Well, I am from Patterson, New Jersey. Born, born in North Carolina, but raised in Patterson, New Jersey. I lived there all of my life. My parents moved there when I was nine months old. And I started singing in my home church, which is Canaan Baptist Church in Patterson, New Jersey. And one choir rehearsal night, my music director, he asked if anyone could sing a certain solo song. And I raised my hand. I said, I could do it, you know. I didn't think I could really do it, but I raised my hand because I love to sing. So when he asked me if I could do it, I said, yes, I could do it. And the song was, I know the Lord will take care of me. And I was 12 years old, not knowing the meaning of that, but my parents were amazed because they had never, no one had heard me sing. Well, I never thought of pursuing singing professionally until an ex-boyfriend, um, he had a friend that was starting a production label and it was called Smack Productions out of Patterson, New Jersey. And the lead over that was Michael Cameron. So he had these auditions. So my ex-boyfriend, uh, his name was Michael Green. He took me to the auditions and he said, you know, go on in there and audition. You could do it. You can do it. And I'm saying, you know, is this for, you know, real? Is this going to be a real production company or is just this somebody trying to make money? So he said, it's for real. I think I was about 21, 22 years old. So um, I went in and I auditioned. And they stopped the audition. They just stopped the audition right then and there. I thought I did something wrong because they stopped the audition. They said, stop, stop. And when they said stop, they said, we found our person. And I'm looking at Michael Cameron going, who are you talking about? And they said, what is your name? And I told him my name, my original, uh, my biological name was Patricia Daniels. And he said, we found our Patricia Daniels. It's hey, doing pretty good. good. How did you get the name Adiva? <laughs> well, when I was in high school, I used to enter all the different talent shows around the city and in high school and the Peppermint Lounge when they had amateur night. And I always said, well, what would I name myself? You know, Patricia Daniels was kind of bland, you know, what nothing, no sparks coming out of that. And my friends used to call me Miss Diva. So one night I happened to enter this talent show and the presenter, he says, her friends call her Miss Diva. And I must say, she is a diva. So I kept writing down this name, a diva, a diva. But I was spelling it A-D-I-V-A. -A. I said, well, you know, I'm going to put a spin on it. And I started spelling it A-D-E-V-A. -E now, this was way before I auditioned for uh, Smack Productions and Michael Cameron. So I said, hey, that sounds pretty good. You know, so I started using the name from there. And I wanted to have a last name. And I loved, loved Robert Townsend at the time. I just loved his acting. So I called myself a diva Townsend. So when we started working together, uh, Michael Cameron asked me, what would be your stage name? I said, Adiva Townsend. And he said, Adiva Townsend. So he cut off the Townsend and said, we're just going to call you Adiva. And I'm like, but what, is, what am I going to do for a last name? He said, nothing. We're just going to call you Adiva. So I said, okay, I'll work with that. And I ran with it. <laughs> song called In and Out of My Life. That was my first song I, I recorded was In and Out of My Life on Easy Street. And that song was really good. 
And that's how we got to the major label. EG Street was an independent label. And we got to the major label because In and Out of My Life came and went up on the dance charts to like number one. So Troy Patterson, who was working at Smack Production at the time as a producer, he wanted to redo Aretha Franklin's Respect. Now wait, Aretha Franklin, the queen herself? Of course, I was, no, I can't. That's Aretha Franklin. And um, he said, just try it. We're gonna put a spin on it. We're gonna turn it around. When it started flying up the charts, I was very happy, very happy because I love singing. I love on stage, I love the lights, I love the crowd, I love the fans. Hey, uh, wait, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Before we get started, I just want to tell all you people in here, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for making me number one club artist in New York for four consecutive weeks, okay? Thank you. I really love it. This look, mm -hmm. I, <laughs> people have said that uh, you got this Grace Jones type thing yeah, happening. I mean, mm -hmm. I think when you look at that picture, it kind of gives you that persona. What do you say to that? Well, I've been compared to Grace Jones ever since I came out, you know, when my hair was like that short, you know, and I cut it down real low and had the high top fade and everything. My image, I built my own image, not to compare myself to Grace Jones because she's in her own category, I'm in my own category. I felt like she was a strong, independent, African-American woman, you know, and that's the way I carry myself. So that was the way I, you know, started doing my image as to being a strong, you know, uh, uh, individual and so people can look up to and young girls can see that you can still be strong and soft at the same time. Mm -hmm. So now, how did you get the title Queen of House? <laughs> I don't know. To tell you the <laughs> truth, I mean, I, I went over to Europe and the announcer, presenter, he started saying, oh, the Queen of House music, you know. So it just kind of stuck and everybody's been using it. Every time I'm introduced at a show or whatever, they say the Queen of House music. Cause I gotta have a little bit Just a little bit I need a little bit A respect Well with Love or Lust uh, We went back in You know um, After the first album And you always want to make your second album Better than your first album You know But when we went back into the studio We had a lot of songs We had a lot of people You know Sending us music We had a lot of people sending us songs And we picked the best songs that we thought we had. then it just started getting different. It started, you know, when you start making a lot of money and you really don't know, 
the money side, the business side, and you're just up there on stage because you're loving the accolades and the singing and everybody chanting your name, but you don't take, you don't pay attention to the business side because you never had to. Ba bottom line, money was stolen from me and I didn't want to do it anymore. Millions of dollars was stolen from me. I've never had a royalty check. All of the money that I made was touring. I went on tour and I came back and I was supposed to get the rest of my monies and the person said, you know, this person is going to write a check. Go up to the office. They'll write you a check. I go up to the office. This person, another person says, I don't have it. He's going to write, he's going to have to come in and write the check. So it kept going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until I had to show my ass. I tore the office up. Okay. I tore the office up. I met, commenced to go downstairs where he had a, a record, uh, a store and I tore every poster off the wall that had my likeness to it. And I knew from that day that it was a wrap. It was over. It was over. What I'm telling you is you know that. I just started I didn't want to sing. I didn't want to be in the music business anymore because I was asked to do things too that was, it was not me. I heard you speak before about the politics of music. Mm -hmm. Tell me something about that. Well, there's a lot of politics that? in the music industry. You know, that's something I like to keep to myself. But music industry, it's that's all it is. It's politics. You know, it's like it's all about who you know. Who you know. And how you're gonna know and when you're gonna know so that's basically what it's all about I was asked to just for publicity to pretend like I was drunk and falling down drunk I've never drank a day in my life I was asked to sleep with people no I was not going to do that I was not going to do that but like they said oh that's just part of the you know music business I wasn't that girl <laughs> no I wasn't that girl. I was not going to do that because if my talent can't take me where I need to be, then laying on my back surely wasn't going to take me where I want it to be. So I was not that girl and I just stopped. I stopped. I will be getting in this room. Yeah. Frankie from day one when I got into the business and he was a DJ and I had loved Frankie before I even met him you know going to the clubs and going dancing and listening to him DJ so when he called me up and asked me to head his his um album you know I said oh my god you want me and he said yes I want you for at least five weeks with that album. And um, Frankie was ecstatic.
ecstatic and I was ecstatic and you know we went on tour went on tour with Frankie for a little while uh, with that album and it, it did pretty well it did pretty well but it still did not make me want to go back out there and get on another label labels were calling again they wanted me to come you know come and sit down and have a meeting with them I, I just didn't want to do it it's the return of a diva, uh, quite literally, in every sense of the word now. Right here, right now, it's one fat diva. When you need money, you go do what you need to do. I had a son to raise. Um, I was in school. I had to pay for that. You know, because like I said, if my money wasn't stolen, I would not have had any problems. Any problems, you know. Uh, but when you need money and you have bills, you go do what you need to do. to do that and I enjoyed that too but I really I really did not want to be on another label I mean whenever I go into the studio I put my all into it I really do whether I if I want to or not I put my all into it because it's just not for me I'm singing for it's for the fans and um, New Direction didn't do as well as we thought it would do because it did not have the push that it should have had right. from the label So then you disappear. <laughs> <laughs> I have a reason why. So let's, let, <laughs> let's get comfortable. Mm -hmm. Where it was a diva from 19, what, what were you doing or what was going on for nine, from 97 mm -hmm. to 2016 or was it 2015 when you came back out with uh, In the Morning and mm -hmm. I Deserve to Breathe? <laughs> Well, I was still touring off of my first album. I, all of those, I was still touring. She goes by the name of... Welcome to Stage Pines and Reunion, Nadima! Are you ready to have a party? Are you feeling the way? Nadima! Off of Love or Lust, uh, um, uh, Respect, I was still, Where's the Love, I was still touring off of all of that, you know, but certain things drastically happened in my life. The first thing was Frankie Knuckles passing away, you know, and that devastated me because I did not know he had passed away because my ear wasn't to the ground. I wasn't really around anyone. So that really hurt my soul. And then the thing that, you know, hurt me too, my dad passed away, you know? And that was my king, my Superman, my all in all, you know? And he died of colon cancer. And when you are standing there and you watch your parent take their last breath, you know, what do you do with that? What, what do you do with that? But the most devastating thing that happened, my own son passed away uh, in a fatal car accident. He was 19 years old. He was home from college for the summer and he got into a fatal car accident and <laughs> to this day, I still deal with that because he was my best friend. We practically grew up together. I had him at 19. And he died at 19. And his name was Paris Daniels. He was a student at North Carolina A&T University in Greensboro. And, um, give me a minute. A 
it's hard. When a parent loses their child, it's hard. And when I lost him, I, I still had two small sons at home, Gershon and, and Reginald. And um, when I lost, when I lost Paris, you know, it took everything out of me. I didn't want to live anymore. I didn't want to live. I didn't want to talk to nobody. And I just went into, you know, a deep depression. And the deep, the depression was so deep until it made me try to commit suicide. Which is something that I am not proud of. But my son was my everything. He's the reason why I was doing all of those shows and touring because I wanted to give him the best life. When that happened that morning, I remember a man coming to my house and he walked up the driveway and I'm looking at this man and I still to this day can see his piercing blue eyes and he had my son's ID license in his hand and he asked me did he live here and I said yes and to make a long story short he told me my son was in a car accident so I told him just give me a minute I will get my mom and we'll go to whatever hospital he's in and this man told me he touched my wrist and he said I'm sorry so everybody knows what those words mean and I asked him I said what do you mean are you telling me that my son is dead and he said, ma'am, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. He never came out and said, yes, your son is dead. He just said, I'm sorry. I didn't want to do music anymore because like I said, I was doing it for him. Thankfully, Louis Vega, the Louis Vega came calling and I had seen him a year prior and he said, you know, I'm getting ready to do this, uh, this LP and I want you to be a part of it. I said, okay. And it was 22 singers, no 28 singers. 28 nights with 28 singers. He opened me back up to <laughs> touring and, you know, going back into the studio and everything like that. Not gonna do it. <laughs> Let me tell you the reason why I don't wanna get back in the music business. Now, will I do features and will I go and if somebody asks me? Of course, of course I will do that. But for me to get back full fledged into the music business, no, I don't wanna do it. I do wanna do a gospel album. I really, really do because I owe that to my parents. You know, to my mom, who is 84 years young. Her name is Mary Daniels. And I owe that to them. But to get back out there and do a full-fledged house album again, no. I People have been calling. They've been asking. But no, because I'm doing right now what I always love to do. Brianna, move over. Here we go. Here we go. And that's teaching. I'm a fourth-grade teacher at Parkton uh, schools here in North Carolina. And I love my kids. I love it. They gave me the reason to live again. This is Lanaya and Kenneth. What are you guys doing? We're making like an island. Talk a little louder. We're making an island. 
I, I've loved kids ever since I was like 12 years old. I went from a camp counselor to a camp director to a daycare worker. I love kids. And I've been teaching now going on, if you put it all together, like 20 years. I really wanted to go back into teaching because for my love of children. I don't do it for the money. I do it for the light bulb that shines when they get it. You know, when they come to me and say, oh, Mr. Harris, I got it now. I understand that. I understand it. You know, when they do that, that lets me know I've done my job as an educator. Put your hands together for a New Jersey legend, born and bred. My girl was one of the first house acts besides 10 City to be on top of the pops. Okay, you might laugh at it now, but back in the late, the early 90s. Put your hands together for the one and only, a diva. about a diva I want them to know and to remember I love singing and I love children and I've been blessed to do the best two things that I've ever wanted to do and that was singing and teaching there are times when we feel that life is full of pain we want to be able to stand the rain but there are things we can't 